Hi, welcome to my leadership podcast. It is part of the wilsonlining.com website because our heart is to help equip leaders and bless various ones across this world. Today, I have a special topic. I want to talk about this topic of lead yourself before you wreck yourself. It's all about self-leadership. When we drive a car, we need to steer the car. If we fail to steer the car, eventually you're going to have a crash. And in the same way, you could become a wreck in your own life if you fail to steer yourself in your life. Have you ever tried to operate a remote control car where we are operating it? And how many of you have found it so difficult to avoid a crash? One of the key reasons is because you're not actually in the car. And so you're not able to respond quickly to the situation that's changing uh, for this car. So have you ever realized that as you were growing up, your parents or your carers may have led the way for you? They basically told you what to eat, what to wear, what to do, basically. And as you were growing up, you would start to make more and more decisions for yourself, at least hopefully. And through this, you begin to learn more and more how to make decisions, even leadership decisions over your own life. Now, if your parents make too many decisions for us, in other words, we don't get the opportunity to develop our skills and our confidence to make significant decisions for ourselves, then we may remain too reliant on them or others. So the thing we need to understand is this, others can only lead you so far and you have to lead yourself the rest of the way. When others lead you, you also will discover that there's often insufficient momentum, there's insufficient timeliness of response. When you lead yourself, you can get further, you can go faster, you can go better, especially when you have God's help. There's a saying by Lao Zhu, which is a Chinese philosopher, and he said this, mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. Wow. So there is tremendous power in self-leadership. So let me share some of the benefits of leading yourself. For example, you can go much further. When I've looked at my own life, I have managed to go further than many people. Why? Because I have led myself to go beyond what others would have naturally led me to. Be because I refuse to be mediocre. I refuse to be average. I desired excellence. So I was able to prod myself and move myself even further. For example, when I was studying in Night Bubble College, uh, most of my uh, fellow students were studying it at a certain point of uh, depth, but I took the extra effort to really study the materials, to ponder, analyze what I was studying so that I may grasp and absorb as much as I could possibly during those times that I was attending that college. That helped me go further in learning compared to my fellow students. Also, self-leadership will enable us to grow in a greater way in maturity. Why? Because when you have to take responsibility to deal with issues, challenges, problems that you face in your own life, it really helps you grow up. You may find that a lot of these problems may be even created by yourself. But through it all, as you face those challenges, you will grow in your experience, you will grow in your maturity, you would increase in your resilience as well, and I believe you will find greater fulfillment in your life. When I was a young boy, I, I realized that I had a lot of fears. I was afraid of the dark, I was afraid of heights, I was afraid of germs, I was afraid of insects, I was afraid of conflict, I was af afraid of failing. There are so many things that if I had just left it there, I, I, it would have crippled me in my adult life. But I learned, I learned to take responsibility and deal with those fears. And as I overcame those fears, it helped me so much in my own personal growth. Self-leadership also helps us grow higher in our leadership. Because 
how well you're able to lead yourself is often correlated with how well you can lead others. Why? Well, for one thing, you can gain significant respect from others if you're doing better in your own life. Also, there are many lessons, there are many skills that you learn from having to lead yourself that you can now begin to help others discover and apply that into their own lives. Effective leaders are usually effective at leading self. John Maxwell had this to say. He said, a leader is one who knows the way, who goes the way, and shows the way. So, for example, I've learned to motivate myself strongly in areas that I'm focusing on. I've learned how to motivate myself through thick and thin. And through that experience of motivating myself, I've learned so much more about how to motivate others as well. Another thing that uh, is a benefit from self-leadership is that you're able to accomplish much more. Many of those who have been able to accomplish much are those who have exercised strong self-leadership. You see, you can then accomplish more of your dreams because you can focus on it. You can uh, motivate yourself to it. And so if you lead yourself well, you can accomplish so much more. I have found that in my own life. There are many things I've accomplished in my academic career, my working life, my ministry life, because I was leading myself. And so I want to encourage you to truly uh, see the benefits of self-leadership and take that responsibility to lead yourself. Now, I want to say this at the same time. Self-leadership does not mean that you totally lead yourself all by yourself. Not at all. In fact, we always need others. We, we need people that can come alongside us to support us, even encourage us and help us along our way. We need God. God can anoint us. God can help us in ways that no other people can help us. But at the end of the day, the more responsibility that you are willing to take for yourself, for your own leadership, for your own development, where we are headed, the better off we will be. So one of the most important keys of self-leadership is really take responsibility for the key areas of your life. Now, I want to talk about some pillars of self-leadership. These are some key areas which we should look at if you really want to develop in your own leadership. The first pillar is this, and that is self-discovery. You see, to improve, we must first understand ourselves. It is so hard to improve yourself if you lack awareness of who you are and where you are at. The Bible gives us an example in Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. This was when God was talking to Cain. It says that, When the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, Sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. So what was God doing? God was challenging Cain to understand the condition of his own heart and the present danger that was right there because of his heart orientation. So Cain need to be more self-aware. We cannot build upon the foundations of who we are unless we are aware of what those foundations are. For example, if you want to play tennis, you, you cannot improve your tennis serve effectively unless you understand something about your own physical body, its makeup, and how you are going about using your limbs and your uh, body and your legs so that you can maximize your ability to serve in a more effective way. You need to understand yourself and what you could be able to do because of the way your body is. So understanding ourselves is so crucial. And God can, and He does help us along the journey. There have been times where God has revealed to me or given me insight about myself, my, my heart attitudes, my values, my, my belief system, or even patterns of thoughts or, or my historical things that's made me who I am, that's affected me how I live or how I make decisions today. 
that revelation has helped me tremendously. So God can help us in the different growth aspects of our lives. Now let me talk about some aspects that we need to discover more about. One is your personality type. We have a class called the Art of Mentoring where we teach about temperaments. And what we need to understand is to understand our personality type, our temperament type, because this will cause us to tend to look at things in a certain way, to respond to things in a certain way. And God has actually made us in a certain way, with a certain slant. It's, it's neither a good or bad thing, because every personality, every temperament, it has strengths, it has weaknesses. Just like if you were to compare, is an oak tree better than a reed? Both has its strengths and weaknesses. Now, if we understand about the makeup of our personality, then we can begin to build upon those strengths and, and leverage upon our strengths. But at the same time, we also begin to recognize the weaknesses that comes with it. And if we can deal with these weaknesses, minimize those weaknesses, then you will find that we can go much further. So there exist today many different schemes that sought to categorize these uh, personalities. For example, a famous one is Maya Briggs. You can look into some of those aspects and understand something about yourself in a much deeper way. And I want to encourage you to take some of those tests to understand a bit more about yourself. And besides, it helps you understand other people too. Now for myself, for example, I understand that I am an introvert. So I had to learn more extrovert behaviors. If I'm going to be able to lead others, I need to understand uh, some aspects of these more extrovert behaviors. Another aspect is I am a thinker. And so I had to learn to be more emphatic. I need to learn to tap into a more, uh, being more sensitive. I had to learn to give lean into those areas to enlarge myself. I am also in, under the Maya Briggs definition, I would be defined as a sensor, somebody who focuses on facts and details. And so to better myself, I had to learn something more about how to operate more on my intuitive side. I'm also defined as a, a more of a judger. And so as part of that, I had to learn to appreciate the value of those who are more perceivers. So all these aspects, as I understood, I began to uh, enlarge myself more, and that helped me tremendously. Another aspect I would say we need to understand more about ourselves is what are our beliefs? What are our values? Now, beliefs is simply what do we actually believe in. Values is about what is important to us. And now why is this important? Because they lead us to our true north. They form our true north. Left to ourselves, our tendency is to head towards those things, things which we believe in, things which we value. And so the stronger your beliefs, the stronger your values, the more strongly we're going to be drawn in that direction. And we need to be aware of this thing. Because whether we appreciate it or not, it's, it's, it's going to draw us in that direction. And it's not so much what you may be saying, but when, what you will actually do when you are perhaps under pressure. That is your natural inclination. And often these beliefs, these values are shaped by our upbringing. It's shaped by what we feed our hearts, we feed our minds. So, for example, when you look at our society around us, the world's beliefs, its values does not align with God's. And if we unknowingly or un unthinkingly just follow the beliefs and the values that the world tells us, it's going to lead us away from God. And so we got to be so conscious about it because that way leads to destruction and untimely, uh, ultimately, death. So if we want to align with uh, God's way, we must look to God. And God's way is the way that's going to lift us upwards in His purposes, in His uh, mission. So the question for us is this, how much will we allow God to shape our beliefs and our values? 
That's why it's so important for us to really grapple with God's Word, to allow His Word to sing into our hearts. That's why it's so important to be in a good church, a good faith community that helps us understand God's Word and live it out. And the thing is this, when our beliefs and our values, when it aligns with God, we will naturally be drawn towards God and His ways. And that is going to lead to a deeper transformation of our minds and our hearts and ultimately our lives as well. That is why I have made that decision that I'm going to choose resolutely, I determined to align my values, my beliefs, my heart to God, to His Word, because I want to walk with Him. And it's so important for us as leaders to realize these things, because if you don't, you may be, be drawn towards certain directions which may not align with God. And you, you may be wondering why you have this constant struggle back and forth. Self-discovery is so important as leaders. And as we discover these things, we need to make some improvements as a result of this self-discovery. You see, we don't want to just discover, but we want to have the self-leadership to work upon what we have discovered about ourselves and begin to make adjustments to ourselves. What are some of the things we can do? Well, for example, enhancing your personality. We've already mentioned every personality comes with strengths and weaknesses. You can work on your personality to continue to build upon your strengths and minimize your weaknesses. Uh, we can gain new strengths. We can become more balanced as a person. Some of us may have personality inclinations that are a bit more extreme. We can learn to balance ourselves so that we're more well-rounded as a person. And when you do that, you can gain a better foundations for more effective and successful leadership in your life. You know, for example, in another scheme, I will be defined as a phlegmatic. And phlegmatics are those that, that love the peace. They, they shrink on conflicts. And that was my natural inclination. So I had to learn how to equip myself so that I can better deal with and face conflicts and even help people deal with conflicts. And that came about because I became conscious of my personality type. Another thing we could do is to begin to adjust our belief systems, our values. We can gain new ones, or we can replace old ones which are not so good. We can tweak it so that it better aligns with God's values. For example, uh, I, I hate the limelight. When I was growing up, I really didn't want to be in any public arena. But I realized because of the call of God upon my life, I had to make some adjustment. I had to change some of my values about being in the limelight. So I came to the point now where I can say, well, it's okay the public arena, let me use it for the glory of God. If I didn't change that value system, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing with you today. Another thing you can do is change your alignment for greater achievement. You see, one of the things we will discover is that as a leader, you will often do better when you're working in areas of your strength. And so we, we have to learn to identify what our real strengths are and build upon that. I have had to learn what my strengths really are and to recognize when I need others to do certain things which I am not strong in. And so that's part of your self-discovery and learning how to work with others, work with your strength and work with the strength of others. Another thing is when we increase in our self-discovery and, and we lead ourselves so that we can align what we do with who we are, what our strengths are, you will begin to discover a greater fulfillment and joy. Because when you're pursuing something that is in line with the type of person you are, then you will begin to find more fulfillment in your life. You can be more energized as you do that work as well. Now let me talk about the second pillar. The second pillar is self-growth. Self-growth is all about continuously striving to improve yourself. See, to lead yourself in this aspect, we need to supply the motivation, the incentive. And a lot of this will come from our own belief systems, our values. For example, if you believe that it is God's intention 
that you grow as a person, that you grow in your maturity, that you grow in your experience, that you grow in your leadership. If you truly believe that, that will supply you the motivation. If you believe that God is wanting you to, to reach a certain point in your development, that will give you more incentive to develop. So you really need to believe that you can better yourself to be better than what you are today. You must be willing to pay the price to invest to become an improved self. That's why you need to have your uh, beliefs and your values in the right way. Let me say, uh, share with you a few key aspects that will help us in our self-growth. Firstly, there must be a commitment to personal growth. It must be high on your priority list because if it's not, it will always be pushed somewhere else. Because I am committed to my own personal development, I, I read the Bible a lot. I study many Christian books, I, uh, leadership books, doctrinal books, church uh, leadership books, and so forth. Uh, between Lailing and myself, we have about 2,000 books in our library today because we're constantly seeking to amass what will help us grow as people, as God's people, and as leaders. You need to also, secondly, have a passion, a passion to learn, a passion and a sense of curiosity. You see, you cannot really improve or change your ways unless you're willing, even eager to learn better ways, new ways. I had to learn how to improve my communication skills. I read books, I watched people as they communicated, I, I observed, I analyzed, I, I thought about it. And as I did that and I practiced it, it really helped me improve in my communication skills. So you need to have that passion, that desire to push you through so that you can grow. Another aspect is be willing to observe those who are successful or who are effective in those particular areas that may be of interest uh, to you. Uh, because as you observe them, it can inspire you. You can say, wow, how did they do that? Why is it they are so good? How is it they're so effective? That can motivate us. And besides, when you watch how people do things, you may suddenly realize, hey, they did it in a way we never thought of before. We, or perhaps they, they were able to do something that we never thought was possible. Yet, when you observe them, you suddenly realize it is possible. And it is possible for you. So observation is important and you can learn so much when you observe and alert, aware about what they're doing, how they're doing, or maybe even why they're doing what they do. And so one of the things I've done over many years is I've, I've enjoyed, I've benefited from observing how significant other leaders, how they operated, how they led others, how they dealt with situations. Another aspect that will help us so much is we need to have a willingness to receive feedback. You see, our perception of self, how well we're doing and, and how effective we're doing certain things and how we impact other people, we don't always get the, the best perception of ourselves. And so feedback is so important. What people say to us, we can use that. We can analyze what they're saying to us to help us continue to improve. And that's why it's so important for us to, to encourage feedback. It's so important for us to create an atmosphere around us that people feel that they can give us feedback. Another aspect I want to suggest to us is that there should be a willingness to embrace failure as part of that journey. You see, whenever we try to grow, there will be times when we will make mistakes. There will be times when we will stumble. But if we have the right perspective, then we will have the attitude that says, Let's learn from them. The only thing I keep telling people, I always tell people this, it's okay to make mistakes, just don't repeat your mistakes. Because if we repeat our mistakes, it means we haven't really learned from our mistakes. So I really wanna encourage us, look at failure in the right way. Brian Tracy had this to say, failure is an absolute prerequisite for success. You learn to succeed from failure. Wow, think about that. So failure is not the end of the road. Failure is just another step in your journey of growth. So in, in my life, I have made many mistakes, 
but I've always resolved to learn from my mistakes so that I would not make those same mistakes again. Another aspect that will help us is just simply a willingness to make changes. We need to be, in fact, intentional if we want to grow, we want to develop. We should identify what changes we should be making in our lives, in our leadership, uh, in our ministry. You know what the definition of stupidity is? Stupidity is expecting more when you keep doing more of the same thing. You cannot expect things to improve if you only keep doing things the same way. So we have to make changes. And the more willing we are to make changes, the greater amount of success you will begin to experience. We also should make commitment to make some self-development plans. You see, we wouldn't just change and develop in an ad hoc way because you woke up one morning and said, I'm going to change this and expect it to happen. A lot of times, change is tough because change means going against our ingrained habits and patterns. It means going against some familiar ways of doing certain things which we tend to fall into if we are not intentional. So we need to make plans and stick to it. For example, to improve certain areas, I had to make some plans to say, I'm going to persist in this thing. I'm going to read those books. I'm going to try to see if I can make clear, tangible improvements in the way I was doing certain things. That will help us get there. And lastly, look to God. Look to Him for strength, for empowerment. You see, we can only get so far by our own strength. But when the anointing of God is upon us, when the grace of God is upon us, you will begin to discover that greater things can happen. You can go further than you ever imagined. God can lead you upon paths that, that you never thought was possible. God may show you ways that you did not imagine was even possible for yourself. But when God is in it, amazing things can begin to happen. Let me now conclude with a third pillar, and that is self-management. When we are able to self-manage, then you will find yourself to be more focused, more productive, a more independent worker. So what are some key ingredients that will help us in self-management? Well, firstly, we got to really look at managing our priorities. And so one of the things we have to realize is that we all have priorities, whether we realize it or not. You see, for example, we may choose to play computer games or scroll through the social media uh, in our free time, that actually reflects a priority. Even though we may not be conscious about it, we may not be intentional about it, but the fact that we're giving it that much time reveals that it is a priority in our lives. And so part of self-leadership is taking control of our personal priorities and being intentional about it. So we, ought, we ought to take responsibility to shape our priorities and manage it. And so, as I mentioned, shaping our priorities is a very important step because it's going to determine our destiny because what you choose to focus on will eventually shape your life. And so we need to be so aware of this area. So what do we need to do? Well, we should identify our current priorities. That is the starting point. What is it that takes up a lot of our waking hours? And I'm not talking of things which are compulsory for us to do, but really where you have choices. What are you choosing to focus on? And then we ought to determine what should be our key priorities in our lives. We should start with some big overarching priorities in life. Ask ourselves, what should be the most important priorities that I should focus on? in my life because that's what your destiny is going to be shaped by. So for example, ask yourself, what are some of the priorities that will help us move forward in God's priorities? What are some of the things that will help me focus to become the type of person God wants me to be or that will help me walk in His ways? What should be truly important in my life? And this goes back a lot to our beliefs, our values. What do we hold in that area? So for example, I have decided I want to be faithful to God in whatever He has called me to. 
I've resolved that my life, I want to live it for Christ. That is my priority. And so many things that happen in my life, I consider that uh, around that filter of saying, how is this going to please God? And that, I think, is so important for us as leaders to consider. Now, I realize that not everybody can work out immediately what should be their overarching priorities easily. It often will take some time of contemplation and prayer and, and thinking about what is truly important. But I want to encourage you to start that journey because the sooner the start you start, the sooner you will find and or discover that answer. The other thing is put SMART goals to it. When I say SMART, I mean S-M-A-R-T. In other words, specific goals, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. And you can look up in, uh, in that area what it all means. That's not to say when we set those SMART goals, it needs to be set in stone. It can be adjusted. It can be modified as we mature, as we gain more insight into what God uh, wants us to do. But it is important to start thinking about SMART goals because it will help you uh, walk towards it. And also, it's so important that we break down our big priorities into bite-sized priorities. For example, I want to be an excellent leader. But to reach that, I had to identify a number of other smaller sizes of priorities. And of course, those priorities, it could be evolving over time in certain seasons of your life. Now, I, as a part of wanting to be an excellent leader, there were seasons and times where I focused on understanding leadership principles. There were times when I, I studied on strategic leadership. There were times I focused on communication for a season of time. Uh, there was a time where I focused upon people and understanding people and personalities. Uh, on another season, I studied apostolic leadership. So there are different things I, I focus on to help me grow in different elements because I broke it all down to different bite sizes. So that will help you in your journey. Another aspect that's important is not simply to manage your priorities, but now we also have to manage our time. You see, we must manage our time, or time is going to manage you. So our time is very valuable. In fact, our life could actually be measured by our time, how we use our time. So part of self-leadership is really taking responsibility to manage your time well. See, we should focus on what is really important. That will help us move forward. And as we focus on those things, it will be part of what will help you uh, cause your priorities to come to reality. So what are some of those ways? Well, you got to learn to manage your tasks, your activities. You got to figure out what is important, what is urgent, what is of priority, what is timely to do right now and perhaps even what we should stop doing manage those tasks manage those activities another aspect that will help us is manage your schedules you can have daily weekly monthly schedules effective scheduling will help you get more out of the limited time that you have every one of us have only 24 hours but when you schedule it well it can help you squeeze more out of those times. you got to really figure out how to manage the non-essential tasks. All of us, we have non-essential tasks that we have to do. But maybe some of them we don't need to do. Some of them, maybe it's time to delete. Maybe some of them, because it's non-essential, maybe we can delay it. We can stretch it out. We don't need to spend so much time on those non-essential tasks. And also one key thing, you have to learn to manage impulses and distractions. What can cause our best time management efforts to go out the window is when we lack the self-discipline to manage our impulses, our distractions. And so self-awareness is a critical part of this. We got to be aware, hey, are we slipping into habits, things that just really are distractions? We have to learn to better focus, concentrate, understand our patterns of the way our brain works, the way we think, the habits that we have in our lives. Can we better manage those things to improve it? That will help us 
improve in the way we manage distractions and impulses. So let me just conclude. We ought to learn to lead ourselves well. And self-leadership is the key. It is the key to our personal growth as leaders. You can lead yourself powerfully for spiritual growth. And you will find that you're going to have greater fulfillment in your heart and you're going to receive eternal rewards when you have chosen to grow in your spiritual areas that pleases God. And I want to say this, in self-development, in self-leadership, we're not talking about some independent self-leadership, but we're talking of a God-dependent self-leadership. We can lead ourselves, we can exercise self-leadership, we can grow as a result of self-leadership, but let's do it in dependence upon God. God bless you.